Hello and welcome to Verbling. I am Teacher Oakley and for the next hour we are going to be looking at some very basic vocabulary to talk about modes of transportation, modes or ways that we move around this silly little planet. Uh, we'll be doing a few mix and match exercises and fill in the blank exercises. First we're going to talk about some concrete nouns, uh, the names of things, and then um, hopefully later in the class we'll be looking at some co-locations and uh, uh, adjectives we use to describe these things. Uh, okay, hello Heidi, how are you? Hello, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, we can know I'm very busy nowadays yeah. because of baby, baby cry uh, anytime, <laughs> sleeps anytime. <laughs> okay. Let and, me, uh... and she crawled, crawled around my house. At first, I need to wipe up anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere, everywhere, everywhere, probably everywhere would be a more appropriate uh, word. Because yeah. if I, I didn't wipe, uh, wipe the, uh, for example, aisle or floor, he will wipe with his, uh, she will wipe with <laughs> her clothes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, I can relate. Believe me, I, I have two young children myself. I totally understand. They're messy. Childhood is a messy business, Heidi. I was to wear <laughs> mop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, nice to see you again. Uh, let me welcome some other students before we get started. Um, is it Jer? Is that correct? Uh, yes, a little bit. My name <laughs> is... Yes, my name is Jair. I am from Brazil. Jair. But, Yes, but in English you can say Jair. All right. Well, all right. I can try Jair. That's okay. okay. You need to challenge me sometimes too. <laughs> anyway, okay. uh, Jair, welcome to the class. Nice to have you aboard. And uh, Geverson, hello. Hello, teacher. Hello. How are, How are you? you? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm okay. <laughs> great. Glad to hear it. Uh, okay, welcome to the class. And um, Italo has just joined us. Hello, Italo. Italo, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I am here. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the class. And. Uh, let me say hello to Keiko has joined us. Hi, Keiko. Keiko, welcome, welcome. Hey, teacher. Nice hello. to see you. Nice hello. to see you. Nice to see you as well. Hello. Um, welcome Thank to you. the class. All right. Um, for just... Let me say for the record, <laughs> I apologize for anybody who uh, had booked my classes yesterday. Sorry about that. I didn't show up because I was in the hospital. I had a traffic accident and a motorcycle. And uh, anyway, I concussed myself. <laughs> Speaking of modes of transportation, uh, they can be dangerous. <laughs> and uh, anyway... My apologies for that, but I'm back in the saddle today, and uh, we can get started. Okay, I'm going to do a screen share, and we're going to look at some very basic uh, nouns to describe uh, modes or ways of transportation on land. Uh, okay, uh, very simple, basic mix and match exercise to start us out. And uh, as we go along, I'll do a little discussion as well. Um, Heidi, well, this is pretty simple. <laughs> Very simple. Number no. one? Yeah, number, well. Scooter. 
Okay, we're going to look at the pictures. All right, scooter. That is a scooter. Heidi, have you ever ridden a scooter? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, really? Yes. Uh, no, I have one. You have one now? Yeah. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> um, that's cool. Uh, do you, do you, what do you use your scooter for? I don't use scooter anymore because the, the shopping mall is very close to my house. Ah, so uh, walking distance, as we would say. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, all right. Uh, scooter, um, very similar to the next one, but it is powered, but a lot less power than our next one. Uh, Jair, what uh, is number two? I don't know, teacher. I think uh, it is not a motorbike. Uh, I, I, it is motorbike. It is actually a motorbike, motorcycle, same thing. Okay. 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 Motorcycle I got it. or motorbike. I got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, do you know how to do you know how to drive a motorcycle? Yes, I I always uh, have a motorcycle, different uh, motorcycle, and today I have a scooter that. Uh, I share with my my wife. Ah, okay. All right. So, uh, all right. Do you find it easier to get around town with your scooter? Uh, yes, it is easier than a car. And during during the hush hours, I usually prefer. Ride a ride a motor bike than than a car. I can reach the the places faster than a car. Yeah, because of traffic, right? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, let's keep zipping along. This is pretty basic. Geverson, number three. Number three. Let me see. Uh... It li looks like um, a van. Uh, um, uh, uh, okay, a van. Van. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, we. <laughs> yeah, it does look like a van. You're you're right. It's um. It's a a little. Different the names in American English and British English. Okay, so um, one thing it's hard to tell here, but uh, okay. Usually, all right for an American, I'll just tell you because I'm an American. I think this is a picture of a minibus, actually. Uh, a van look very very similar, but a van probably doesn't have these back windows and mm. that would be considered a van in, in ah, United okay, States. Okay. All right. I have, uh, a van would be like a the 11? Yeah, right. But this is more the concept in British English. Okay. The, uh, you know, in American English, number 11, we call that a... I'm not sure because it's a bad picture. <laughs> but... <laughs> Either that's a pickup truck, or maybe this looks like a camper. It looks like it has a uh, like a, an area where you can actually sleep, but I can't really tell. Again, bad picture. But mm -hmm. in in British English, they consider they would consider this to be a van. A little okay. different. And in, in American English, a van is all connected, like picture three. So mm -hmm. very similar. All right. Um, I think this is the concept here in Brazil too. Yeah. Okay. In Brazil, do they um, do they use uh, these mini buses as uh, or mini vans sometimes called mini vans? Do they use these for transportation, public transportation? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, mainly here in São Paulo, is very common. In this really. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
They they use uh, they use them here uh, where I live in the Philippines as well. Usually, if you're to travel from point A to point B, not usually to make a lot of stops, but uh, yeah, for travel like that. Um, usually, usually when we are waiting for a bus, uh, the guys comes with uh, uh, a van to try to catch the the people waiting for buses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I see. I get it. All right. To try to steal some business. Okay. Teacher, yeah, Teacher, yes. here, here in the south of Brazil, van is very common to take children to the school. Ah, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I could say exactly the same thing in the Philippines. They don't use the big school buses here. They use just like this, minivans or uh, uh, minibus. Yeah, okay. Interesting. My, my daughter goes to school with one van. Okay. All right. Well, that's interesting. All right. Same thing here. Okay. Uh, Italo, what's this? Number four. Yeah. Number four is a uh, bus. Okay. Well, as an American, I would call it a bus. No, it's a British bus. A British bus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, I, uh, again, this is a little confusing, again, with British and American English because, um, well, actually, Americans, seven or four here, we would call either one a bus. Um, but, uh, yeah, British would call number four a bus and number seven they would call a coach. Now, on the other hand, Americans take sometimes particularly older people like to take a bus tour or they call it a coach tour. So when you take it as a tour to go to specific uh, tourist destinations in America, it's called a coach as well. A, a little bit confusing, but bus coach are in, fairly interchangeable. Of course, we don't have the double-decker bus which is what Americans call the British buses. We, we call it a double-decker bus. Italo, have you, have you ever ridden on a double-decker bus? Uh, no, in my country, no. I have not uh, uh, a double, a double uh, floor. Double. One floor, like number seven. In um, my country, there are a one level only. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I've never ridden in one of these buses either. So, yeah. They're very British, you know, of course. Uh, okay, next one, Keiko. Train. Is a train. Okay. Uh, it's obviously a train. Um, do you know the parts of a train? Like the front car? Do you know what? Okay, each each section of a train is called a car in English. Locomotive, the first wagon, the others. Okay. Locomotive. All right. Locomotive. Who? who, who okay. uh, which? Which pull the composition? Which pulls the whole thing. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the, the unity who has the power to... Right. ...impulse all the composition. Okay. Now that's kind of where I wanted to head because I wanted to clarify that. Locomotive can mean that. You're right. We also in English call that part the engine because that is the part that pulls the rest. Uh, okay. Or, in English, we can call the whole train a locomotive. Okay, can be actually refer to either. Now, the sections of a train are actually called cars. Or, if you are traveling by train, um, you can travel 
Sometimes they're called coaches, as a matter of fact. So uh, they could be okay. called either. So it can be a little confusing because interchangeable words here. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. You ever ride the train, Keiko? Yes, teacher. I use train uh, in, a, in a daily basis to, to commute to and from my, my job. Uh -huh. Of course, there's other names for trains as well, depending where you are. Um, if you're in a city, usually a train going from one city to another is a train, one way or the other, in English. But if you're taking an underground train in New York City, do you know what that's called? What we call it in New York? Besides dirty and stinky. <laughs> Subway. Okay, Jefferson's got it. So um, it's called a subway in New York City. In London, it would be an underground. Um, it depends where you are, really. Uh, uh, yeah. Is the same subway in Metro? Metro, I was just going to say that. I, I used to live fairly close to Montreal, Canada. In Montreal, Canada, it's the metro. That's right. Uh, metro is more French. But exactly. Amazing difference. Montreal, the metro, you could eat off the floor. I swear to God. It's so clean. It's unbelievable. But if you ate off the floor in New York City subway, you'd be dead in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> really a big difference. Uh, a huge difference, as a matter of fact. And here, here in the Philippines, in the Manila, we have a train, but it's all on raised platforms. Um, none of it's underground, so it's the overhead. So whatever, it depends on where you are, what you call the train. Okay. Um, moving on, Heidi, number six. Moped. Is a moped. All right. Have you ever had a moped? I know maybe it's a very small engine. Um, in Japan, yes. um, until uh, 50 cc engine. It's yep. Called moped. That's right. Very good, and it can be powered by pedaling it like a bicycle or or with the engine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a moped when I was like 17. Of course, it was a long time ago, and gas was a lot cheaper. But uh. I remember that I could I filled the tank in the beginning of the summer and basically I could drive around all summer long. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's like I don't know. Uh, I, Japan, many women are using a moped. Yeah. To go really? to the supermarket or right. <laughs> to go to the job. Or something. Yeah. Super super fuel efficient. You can go forever. Um Right. Uh, okay. Very fuel efficient. Okay. Teacher. I have. Y yes, Keiko. The, the pronunciation is moped or moped. Moped. Two syllables. Good question. Moped. Okay. Um, this happens with some words in English where you have two syllables like this, uh, where it it's you can't really tell. But in fact, this is a. This is a compound noun, like baseball, notebook, moped, high and then low. It's actually from two root words, mo for motor, you know, ped like pedestrian. All right, two very solid root words stuck together, moped. There's others, okay. things like hotel. All right, they're actually compound nouns. So they're, they're really impossible to figure out that they are, but... It is, in fact, a compound noun. So, good question. Uh, you're welcome. I actually have now, I own a, I don't know what you call it. It's an electric scooter. But on the other hand, if I have to, it has detachable pedals. So, I guess it's kind of an electric moped. If I had to, I could pedal it. But believe me, you don't want to because it's really hard to pedal. Um, Okay, let's move on. We already talked about buses. Let's 
look at number eight. Jair, what is number eight? Um, I'm not sure about uh, mm -hmm. uh, it. could be uh, a tram. Good guess. Okay. Very good. A tram. Um, if you see one in San Francisco, it's a streetcar or New Orleans. Um, call it a streetcar. Uh, okay. Do they have any of these? Where you live in Brazil? Uh, yes, I think in some cities like Rio de Janeiro, uh -huh. we we have a tram for tourists to visit uh -huh. the, the city. You know. Uh huh. That's funny that you say for tourists. So the locals don't really use the trams. Uh, yes, because there is other. Mm -hmm. Means means of transportation better, right? Or, better yeah. means of transportation. Yes, and it usually costs less than a tram, ah. for instance. So, okay. for for tourism, tourists, it would be a good idea to know the places, but for regular um, citizen or uh -huh. people that live there, it would be. A little bit uh, expense, so yeah. In my in my opinion, once or twice, that's okay to <laughs> yes right. to, I to have to have fun, but uh, not every day or because it is expense. You know. yeah. Right, and uh, yeah, that, that's often the case. I think streetcars are for for tourists. It's something you do if you go to San Francisco, for example, or New Orleans, you take the streetcar. Uh, okay. Um, moving on, uh, Geverson, number nine. It's a bicycle. Of course. What kind of bicycle? Uh, <laughs> I don't have idea. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not brand. I don't mean. Is it a Schwinn? Is it a? I don't. I don't mean that. But it looks like a, maybe a mountain bike. Maybe mountain bike. Mountain bike. Maybe. Do, do you have a bicycle? I've already had. <laughs> uh, you used I to. Have. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, but I. I. I think it was a small bike when I was a. Uh, uh, chewed. <laughs> okay, when you were a, when I was a child. A child, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, right. I want to get a mountain bike. Actually, I need the exercise, but I don't have one now. I, now I, I would I, like to have a uh, one now, but it's difficult to conciliate the time to to yeah. walk and uh, by bicycle. <laughs> Right, I hear you. I do. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on, Italo. Yeah, number ten. Okay. Number, number ten is a is a car. Obviously, it's a car. Yeah. Very simple. Uh, okay. Do you have a driver's license, Italo? Yes, but my car is about env environmental friend. <laughs> Environmentally friendly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good for you. That's great. Uh, how old do you have to be? Where are you from again? Atala? Uh, I'm from Colombia, Bogota. Okay, Bogota. Uh, how old do you have to be in Colombia to get a driver's license? Uh, please repeat the, the question. Sure. What age do you have to be in order to get a driver's license? Oh, uh, from 16. 16, same as the United States. Okay. Yes. And yes. By, by the way, um, in British would call it a driving license, but Americans call it a driver's license. Slight difference there, but it's the same thing. Okay. 
Now, uh, I think we already talked about the van here and how it's a little bit different than a van in the United States. A van in the United States looking more like three. So let's just take a look at this last one and talk about it for a second. Keiko? Last one. Keiko, are you there? Yeah. Tr truck, but... Uh... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what would be lorry? Lorry. In there you go. English. <laughs> Very good. You got it. Uh, Americans would just call this a truck, obviously. Uh, British English Brits call it a lorry. Uh, okay, the kind of trucks or the, the kind of vehicles. These are all vehicles, by the way. The kind of vehicle that you use to transport goods. Um, okay. In American English, we also call it uh, a semi, um, especially if it's a bit bigger. Uh, it can be called a semi. How, how to pronounce, did you? Semi? Yes. Yeah, it's a semi, semi truck or just a semi. Uh, that's it. Or you can just call them trucks, really. Uh, that's fine too. And uh, so actually, sometimes we call them 18 wheelers. Sometimes, if we want to define a truck, we, we define it by talking uh, about how many wheels or tires it has. 18 wheeler. Most, most trucks for transporting goods have, if you count them, you find they have 18 wheels. Anyway, uh, okay. Uh, let's let's move on. Uh, KKL, have you ever driven a truck like a semi or 18 wheeler? Yes, teacher. You have? Uh, uh, yes, I have read uh, ridden uh, a semi. It was really? it was in in nine in the nineties okay. during during a few days. A few opportunities. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. easy. Well, it's not so hard to drive them. It's hard to back them up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, 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 a little Mercedes. Ah, okay. Six, six zero eight. The, a right. mark called 608. Right. Uh, yeah, I know, yeah, I know that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, true enough. Um, okay, um, one, we already talked about lorries and trucks, but one last thing: um, people who ride uh, does it motorcycle, scooter, uh, bicycle, often call them all bikes or refer to them as my bike is out in the yard. I parked my bike in the street. You don't really know if the person's talking about a motorcycle or a bicycle. Uh, honestly, they they use the term bike for both. Uh, okay, let's see if we can challenge ourselves on the water a little bit. Looking at these nouns for modes of transportation. Um, which one do you think, Heidi, which one do you think is the cruise ship? Cruise ship, uh, maybe 10. Number 10, okay. Uh, yes, I would agree. Have you ever taken a cruise? Yes, only once. You did? Where did you go? Uh, New York. Really? Yes. I've ne oh, interesting. Okay. And we enjoyed the dinner and uh, some concerts, jazz band, so always uh, sounding something. <laughs> and oh. we had a din dinner, and uh, our cruise ship uh, approached very close to the, the uh, Statue of Liberty. Ah, okay. But that time we couldn't um, uh, uh, land or land in the, uh, the island, the Statue of Liberty. Okay. L Liberty Island. Yeah, uh, because uh, just after the terror attack. <laughs> ah, I see. Oh, okay. Hmm, interesting. All right, so not a huge cruise ship then, a small... Uh, like 
a few hour cruise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, not one of these monster uh, <laughs> ocean liners, we could say. Uh, okay, huge ships. Okay. Uh, all right, that's that's a good point. There are really really huge cruise ships that you go to Alaska or around the Caribbean or Mediterranean or something like that. Really really big ships, and then there's much, but there's still much smaller cruise ships for maybe one or two nights or just for the afternoon, whatever. Mm, there is a casino one. A lot of uh, enjoy. Ah. <laughs> really. Yeah, I don't know, my uh, cruise ship uh, didn't have a casino or something, but in the uh, uh, Mediterranean uh, cruising, uh, they have casino right. or pool mm. or something. Right, right. Exactly, uh, okay. Like moving um, building. <laughs> right, well, that's basically what it is. Yeah, it's a giant moving hotel. Um, true. Uh, Jair. Where car, car ferry? Car, car ferry. I'm not sure, but I think maybe it could be the number four. I'm not sure either. <laughs> I can't really figure out which one is the car ferry. Oh, okay. I, I see. No, it's not number four, but I understand why you say so because it's flat. Um, no, actually, <laughs> it would help if we had better pictures. Actually, I think it's number one because you okay. can kind of see the cars on the deck. Okay, the floor of a ship is always called a deck. Okay, uh, right. what is the difference uh, between car fare and ferry boat? Do you know? Do you know ferry boat? Yeah, I do, and there, there is, okay, well, all right. All right, well, the word ferry, F-E-R-R-Y, ferry is very old. So it used to be if you needed to travel with your goats and your horse across the river, you would take a ferry across the river, okay, to get from one side of the lake or the river to another would be a ferry. Um very old concept. Um, okay, so car ferry, they just stuck that on to show the fact that you can drive your car. Now, uh, it would be very, frankly, if, you know, if I was in America, I would just call it a ferry. I probably wouldn't actually say car ferry. We're going to take a ferry to cross the lake, or we're going to take a ferry to the next island, something like that. So, really, there is no difference. You're just when you use car ferry, you're kind of showing that, you know, there's cars on it, or there can be cars on it. Okay, so okay. really not not much difference. Yes, because uh, because I asked you because we have a ferry boat uh, in my city. Yes, to go from one city to other city, mm -hmm. we have to cross the river. So mm -hmm. they they call ferry boat in English. Yeah. Okay, same thing, really. Um, and it doesn't matter if they allow cars on it or not. We, we commonly call it a ferry anyway. Okay, uh, let me quickly welcome Saiban to the class. Hello, Saiban. Hey, teacher, how are you? I'm fine. We'll, we'll come back around to you in just a minute. Just wanted to say hello, greet you to the class. Uh, okay, Geverson. Which is a fishing, fishing boat. boat. Mm. Okay. Uh, it looks like uh, the number seven. I think you're right. Um, yes. Uh, that looks like a fishing boat. Sometimes it may be called a trawler. Okay. Trawler? A, yeah, a trawler is... A trawler trawls. <laughs> to trawl. <laughs> uh... Uh, okay, to trawl is to try to catch fish with a net. Okay, they're trawling. So this looks like it has stanches, those posts that stand up to hold nets, so I agree. Geverson, have you ever been on a fishing boat? 
Uh, no, no, I don't. But I, I'm. I think it's it's very uh, beautiful to to see uh, the the fisher use one of these boats to to fishing some some okay. fish. <laughs> it's very okay. beautiful. Instead of no, I don't. That means something you you don't do regularly. It would be better to say no, I haven't, or no, I haven't been on a fishing boat. You use okay. present. Present perfect because because you you know what Geverson you're not dead yet so there's still a chance you may someday <laughs> okay may, okay do it I have not yet yet <laughs> yeah so the idea is to not is to show that it's not really a finished action it it could that could change in the future so I haven't yet okay right that would be the Thank idea you for the advice oh so, uh, yeah certainly that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Okay, Italo, uh, looking uh, looking at the next one here. Where is the yacht? The yacht is number nine. I agree. Uh, yeah. Also, okay. Um, what's the difference between a yacht and a sailboat, Italo? Do you know? Number uh, yacht be, uh, with a uh, sailboat? Yeah, is there a difference? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, the the yacht is, uh, is big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Respect. Yeah. Respect the lifeboat and the... The um, the jack uh, the function is with the wind. Okay, um, wind. All right. Basically, a yacht is a big sailboat, but a yacht probably has a motor as well. A yacht probably a yacht usually has quarters, or it has a bedroom or a galley kitchen is a galley on a boat probably has a bathroom a sailboat can be very small only one person um, or two people so if it has sails it's a sailboat but not all yachts are sailboats pretty much well no that's not true um, all yachts have quarters or inside rooms but many of them are sailboats as well but a sailboat just has sails. Anything that has sails, travels with the wind, is a sailboat. One last thing, don't pronounce the CH, okay? Just yacht. The CH, this is a very strange English word. We don't pronounce the CH. Um, quite unique, actually. Yacht. Ah, sound yacht. Okay, so, so much for that. Keiko, about but the next one rowing boat yeah the the third figure yes it is but um I, I don't know why rowing boat no one calls it a rowing boat it's a rowboat um yeah we would never call that <laughs> or maybe they do in England maybe that's a british thing but americans uh, I, i've only heard it ever called a rowboat uh okay um have you uh, ever been out in a rowboat? No, no, teacher. I have no. never been hmm. in okay. any one boat. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I've never been in any boat. In any boat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, in okay. Interesting. Okay, one, um, uh, another Point, vocabulary point in a rowboat. Oh, you see the. Oh, oh, sorry, teacher. In any, in any rowboat, I have ah. been in ferries. Ah. In ferry. in ferries, oh, I, I have a red bin. Okay, okay. And while we're talking about boats, the preposition is on. You'd be uh, on okay. on a rowboat. Oh, well, in a rowboat. Ah, on a yacht, on a cruise ship, on a speedboat. 
Mm, interesting. Um, obviously, you would have to be in. Well, uh, hmm. Be okay to say in a rowboat. Yeah, that would be all right, actually. Hmm. Got to be careful with in and on. It, usually, the big ones you're on. Okay, oh. I have a red pin on a on a ferry. So you'd be in a in a rowboat or in a canoe or in a yeah. Okay, on a ferry. That's right. Yeah, somebody else have a question? Is that about in a uh, cruise ship or on a cruise ship? On, I would say on a cruise ship. Definitely. It's because you you can walk inside. Is it like that? Mm. I've I've heard uh, I've heard an explanation of, about using in or on when you can walk in or you you go inside and can walk inside and you can use on. I don't know if it's correct. About yeah, that. well, you you go on a bus or on a um, it's not all entirely correct. Okay, because you're you're in. You're in a car. You're in a taxi. All right. But you're on it's not like uh, for for ships like uh, like on the water. Oh, for ships. Uh, well, okay. I you know I, I would be on a cruise ship, on a ferry, on a fishing boat, on a yacht, definitely in a rowboat, on a speedboat. <sighs> I, I don't know if it has to do with the inside part because, well, uh, maybe. I guess you can go inside each of the other ones. I guess that's a way to think about it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Never thought about it that way, but okay. I guess that's a useful explanation and a helpful memory tool. Okay. Very good. We'll go with that. Um, all right, Saban. Okay, teacher. Yes. Still here? Uh, can you find me the speedboat? Uh, speedboat. I, I think uh, it's number two. Okay. Very good. Yes, it is. Have you ever been on a speedboat? No, I have never been on the speedboat. But I wish maybe someday I will uh, be in in the speedboat. On, on a speedboat. Oh, okay, on the speedboat. Okay. Have you ever been on any kind of boat or ship? Uh, no, I've never been in any kind of ship or, or boat. Because, uh, you know, uh, we don't have... It's uh, uh, In my country, Iraq, as you know, uh, we, do, we don't have a lake or ocean. So we are, I don't know what's the word that uh, use it in English. A lock, war, lock. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. The, the country that are, they don't have ocean. I There is a word in English, but yes, I forget the word. Landlocked. La yeah, landlocked. Yeah, la landlocked. So our country is landlocked. Uh, we right. don't have o ocean. Uh, that's why people are not, uh, I mean... We are not have a harbor, uh, and people not going. I mean, we have some uh, small lake or a river uh, in Iraq, but not uh, the ocean. Or I mean, that's why it's not uh, popular in my country to, I mean, ride the ship or boat, ship or boat. Uh, right. It's it's landlocked. Uh, L O C K E D. Landlocked. Okay. Land. Landlocked. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody uh, know? Uh, yeah. It's a, is it is it a country who only has only has dry frontier frontiers, teacher? Boundaries. Not not sure. Yeah. That's right. No shore. That's right. Yeah, no exactly. shore. That's right. Exactly. Landlocked. Yeah, that's it. Um, that's it. It's, this is one of those words that y I think you can find it together. 
or separate it. Um, I think either one is correct. I think it's correct to separate the words or keep them together. Uh, uh, yeah, English hasn't quite decided, but I think it's okay either way. So yes, that's it. Landlocked. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Moving on to, to the next one here. Uh, Heidi, where is the barge? Number four. Yeah, there you go. What is a barge used for? Um, uh, for example, in the port, a big, very big uh, uh, ship uh, came in the port. Then they need to stop in the place. The barge uh, drag the big boat or uh, uh, to guide them uh, to the right place. Ah, okay, not quite. I think you're thinking of a tugboat. Mm -hmm. Okay, a tugboat and a barge are a little different. Okay, a tugboat, yes, it's usually used around a harbor to direct or even pull the really, really huge ocean liners um, or tankers, the ones that carry gasoline or oil. Or oil. Those, are, those are called tankers. Or tanker ships. Um, anyway, they're so huge they're hard to turn. So tugboats actually pull them around. A barge is very flat, as you can see from the picture here. They, I, I don't know what else they use them for. There must be other uses, but the only thing I can think of that I've seen a barge used for is for garbage. <laughs> Actually, garbage. <laughs> garbage. It's very common to pile them up with garbage and pull the garbage out to sea or pull it to another area, whatever. Um, in fact, garbage barge, very common collocation. Mm -hmm. I suppose they must use them for other things. But it, transferring material, one sort or another, definitely not for passengers. Um yeah, that's basically a barge is used for because they're very flat. They go, they move very, very slowly. They're very powerful, but they move very, very slowly, carrying heavy things. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Jr. Jr. is going. Geverson. Where's <laughs> submarine? Hi. <laughs> Submarine number five. Yeah, of course. Um, all right. Now, I, I'm sure you've never been on a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I, maybe I'm not sure. How can I be sure of that? I don't really know you. Maybe. Well, I, I, I've, uh, I've heard the chance to, to be inside one, <laughs> but I, I really? could not. Yes, yes, uh, because in my, I'm, f at the moment I'm I'm living in São Paulo, but I'm from Maceió, and mm -hmm. there it has a port, uh -huh. and uh, some sometimes not so frequently, so often, is there is some expositions oh, yeah. of uh, military ships, and. Okay. Uh, it had a, a submarine. It has a lot of time. Okay. Uh, cool. I could not go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's cool. The only submarine I've been on was at Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that counts. That's not really a submarine. But uh, obviously, submarine, okay, whenever you see sub as a prefix or beginning of an English word, it means under something. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, subway, we talked about earlier, under. Uh, there always has some meaning of uh, under. And marine, of course, is very strong. Mare, the Latin word for English. Um, you see M-A-R or M-A-R-I, M-A-R-E. This is a root word. It has something to do with the ocean or the sea. Mm. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Um, teacher. Yeah. It, it, 
it's to remember something. And about marine, like a soldier. Yeah, it, right. Uh, it's like a, a terrain soldier. Yeah, it, oh, well, <laughs> a marine. Um, okay, and I, an army. Army is for fighting on land. Air force, obviously, in the air. Um, Navy, obviously, in the water. A marine is land and water. Um, the whole idea is that they are the ones that take the beaches. So they go from the water to the land. So the, the word really has a connection with the soldier. Uh, well, it, it does, because the, the whole idea is that they're attacking land from the ocean. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> A marine, right. Or at least that was the original idea. Uh, okay. Italo, can you find me the canoe? The canoe is number, number six. That's terrible. You are, I mean, you are correct. You are correct, but that's a terrible <laughs> picture. Because, in fact, that is not a canoe. Do you know what that is? Maybe for a Brit, that's, that's a canoe, but that's not a canoe for an American. That, for what? For an American, that is not a canoe. That is a kayak. A kayak oh, yeah. is completely different. A, not completely different. They're similar, but a kayak, if you notice in the picture here, the kayak has a covered top, and you, the, your legs go underneath this covering. A canoe is open, completely open from end to end. Generally speaking, a kayak is for one person, maybe two people. Um, but generally speaking, a kayak is smaller, a lot smaller. That is definitely a kayak because also he has the, the double paddle. Um, okay, the guy in the, uh, in the rowboat, he uses oars. Right, those two paddles that you use both arms, those are oars. Okay, or I don't know, if you're on an ancient Roman boat and you're a slave, you, you're using oars to move. But in a kayak or a canoe, you use a paddle. Or in the picture here, he has a double paddle. I don't know why, it's basically the same idea, but you use a paddle because it's free with your arms to use, an oar is locked into. In fact, it's called an oar lock, the thing that it's locked onto the boat. Uh, anyway, okay, so canoe. Canoe, or this would be really, honestly, it's a kayak. Uh, Italo, have you ever been kayaking or canoeing? No, never. Ah. No. Fun sport. No. Yeah. Uh, a kayak uh, you would use for white water, steep rapids, much more useful for that. You, I mean, you can use a canoe. Canoe is more for, like, paddling down a quiet river or a, a lake or something. Uh, okay. Uh, last one. Last one here, Keiko. I suppose lifeboat should be the fourth. The fourth? Uh, yeah. you, well, <laughs> no. Uh, number four is a barge. Okay, you have to imagine okay. it being a lot bigger than it kind of looks. A barge is quite big. If it were very small and fit a few people. Now, okay, lifeboat. All right, for an, uh, in American English, here's another one that's a little different. A lifeboat is something you throw over from a cruise ship if you want to survive, like the Titanic, you're sinking. So it's small, maybe it's inflatable, um, but it's a smaller boat, uh, maybe like a slightly bigger rowing rowboat, all right, somewhat different. Here in this book, they're talking about number eight as being a lifeboat. Um, okay. 
Uh, I know why they're saying that it's a boat to rescue people, but number eight looks a lot to me like a tugboat, really. I, I thought, teacher, uh, eight to be speedboat. Mm, I, I don't think so, because number two is much more like a speedboat. Uh, they call this a lifeboat now. Uh, okay. Americans might call that a lifeboat as well, but um, really, for Americans, we're used to the Coast Guard, another, going back to the military, actually the fifth, and people don't think of it, but it is another, uh, it's another um, section of the military, at least in the American military, is the Coast Guard. And... Um, their biggest function is actually to rescue people at sea. So they would have a boat similar to this, but much, much better. Uh, called a Coast Guard Cutter. So if I'm considering about getting rescued from the sea, I want a Coast Guard Cutter. <laughs> I don't want a tugboat. This thing looks more like a tugboat in the picture. Again, a tugboat is to help people, but help, help maneuver large vessels. Okay, anyway. Uh, all right. I guess because it has this radar system on the top, we can recognize that as, all right, being some kind of rescue I vehicle. Have, I have seen this one, one of these kind trying to, to guide a, a great ship mm -hmm. and the it has a lot of uh, like car tire. I don't yeah. know if this that's is right. Because the impact of the the that's right. Great so they, they line the outside of the tugboat with car tires, so if they bounce against them, it won't hurt. Yes, yes. Either exactly. right. Yes. Well, okay. So there you go. Uh, this right, and it's missing the car tires here on this picture. But yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay, last in English, uh, a ship it refers to a large boat. How large does it have to be to be a ship and not a boat? I don't know. It's one of those words that's kind of up to the speaker. And one last word, um, if boats make you sick, that's called seasick. You're, if you get seasick from being on the water, you get nauseous. Um, yeah. If you're lucky, you don't get seasick. Okay, uh, that is all we have time for. Thank you very much, and um, we'll see you guys again here on Verbling real soon. Thanks a lot, but I have to say bye for now. Thank you, teacher.